Hello everyone. Welcome back to Knowledge Base. Today we're diving into one of the most important topics in Java programming. Exception handling. In this video we'll walk through the 5 key exception handling keywords in Java. Try, catch, finally, throw, and throws, with live code examples to help you understand how to handle exceptions like a pro. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Let's jump right in. First things first. What are exceptions in Java? Simply put, an exception is an event that disrupts the normal flow of a program's instructions. These can be logical errors like invalid user input or a missing file. Instead of letting our program crash, we use exception handling to catch these errors and keep our program running smoothly. Before handling exceptions, a program will abruptly terminate when it encounters an error. Imagine trying to open a file that doesn't exist. It would cause a crash and leave resources like memory or file handles unreleased. But, after handling exceptions, the program can gracefully handle the error and continue running. Resources are closed, and we can show user-friendly error messages. So why is exception handling necessary? Without it, programs are prone to unexpected crashes. Handling exceptions makes your code more robust, allows for proper resource management, and prevents issues like memory leaks. Here's an example. Opening a file inside a try block and using catch to handle a file not found exception. Then, using the finally block to ensure that the file is closed, even if an exception occurs. The try block in Java is used to monitor code that may throw an exception. This is where the risky code lives. For example, dividing a number by zero will throw an arithmetic exception, and this error will be caught by a catch block. Here's a basic example of a try block that checks for division by zero. Next, we have the catch block, which is used to handle exceptions thrown by the try block. You can have multiple catch blocks to handle different exceptions. Here's a quick example. If you try dividing by zero, the catch block will handle the arithmetic exception and prevent your program from crashing. When multiple exceptions may occur, you can use multiple catch blocks to handle them separately. But here's something important to remember. Always catch more specific exceptions first, followed by more general ones. Let's say we're catching arithmetic exception before catching the general exception. Doing it the other way around would cause a compilation error. Moving on to the finally block. The finally block in Java is unique because it always executes, whether an exception is thrown or not. It's primarily used for resource cleanup. For example, if you open a file, you want to make sure that the file is closed, no matter what happens in the code. Here's an example of using finally to ensure the code runs, even when an exception occurs. Now let's talk about throw. This keyword is used to explicitly throw an exception from a method or block of code. For instance, you can use throw to create and throw a new arithmetic exception. It's useful for throwing custom exceptions when certain conditions aren't met. In this example, if the user's age is less than 18, we explicitly throw an arithmetic exception with a custom message. Next is throws. This is used in method signatures to declare that a method may throw one or more exceptions. It's typically used for checked exceptions like AO exception. Here's how you declare that a method may throw an IO exception, signaling to the caller that they must handle this exception. Java also allows us to create our own exceptions by extending the exception class. This is useful when you want to throw exceptions specific to your application's logic. Let's say you're building a banking application, and you want to throw a custom insufficient funds exception when the withdrawal amount exceeds the account balance. Let's demonstrate all the five keywords used in exception handling practically.
First we see what happens if we don't handle exceptions. Here we see an exception in the runtime. Let's handle the exception by using try catch. Remember that only risky code, minimum code right into the try block. Because when the exception occurs from the current line control directly jumps to the catch block and remaining lines in the try block will not be executed. Finally block always runs no matter exception will occur or not. But catch block will be executed only when exceptions will be throws. Here we are adding multiple catch blocks. Remember the sequence of multiple catch block is from child to parent. Otherwise compiler will throw an error at the time of compilation. Only one catch will be executed that matches exception occurred in try block. It is recommended to write multiple catch blocks if try block may throw multiple types of exceptions. Now let's see the use of throw keyword. Finally see the second exception handling method by using throws keyword.
We have seen exceptions those are unchecked. Now see how checked exceptions work. Checked exceptions checked by the compiler and compiler gives an error message if we are not handling it in our code. Compiler forces us to handle checked exceptions only after that it will execute our code. Unchecked exceptions will not be checked by the compiler that's why we can run our program easily without even handling exceptions. Throws is mostly used to handle checked exceptions. In this example interrupted exception is the checked exception. Let's see how we can create our own exceptions. That is user-defined exceptions. Where throw keyword is mostly used to throw our own exception object. Remember we can throw an object of throwable class only. So inherit our exception class from built-in exception classes so that our class becomes throwable. To summarize, exception handling in Java is critical for writing reliable, error-free programs. We've covered the five key exception handling keywords, try, catch, finally, throw, and throws, and even explored how to create custom exceptions. Remember, proper exception handling will make your Java applications more robust and professional. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon for notifications on future tutorials. Drop any questions or suggestions in the comments below, and I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one. Subscribe to our channel to increase your knowledge with the knowledge base. Thank you.